when it comes to empowerment, and, and I'll, I'll speak specific to China, but the truth is it applies in, other, in every international market, every, every culture. To truly empower somebody means you trust them, and you trust them not to let you down. And in a place like China where uh, there is very much this respect for the leader and very much this desire, desire to honor the leader and not let them down, you actually have this extra, <laughs> this, this added advantage if you want to use empowerment. So if you have an executive on your team who's responsible for developing marketing programs on a brand like Martel Cognac, if they know their actions represent your desires, if they know their actions will cause you to be proud of them, cause you to support them, that extra hook or that, that extra impetus truly drives results out of empowerment. If I simply say, go execute the program, do this, do this, do this, do this, I'm not empowering. I'm actually instructing. So there's that softer uh, connection between the individuals which says, I, as the leader, trust you not to let me down. But I'll also give you a good idea of what it is I expect, uh, what tools you might need to go and execute it accordingly. And when you do succeed, I will let you know you made me proud. And, and it's win-win for everybody. But I think that part of empowerment is key, is trust the individual, but also let them know that you're counting on them. And certainly in a place like China, that, that's a very powerful, very, very powerful vehicle. By background, I'm a, I'm a finance person. And my first posting as a CEO, my first meeting with the CFO, I was still thinking like the CFO. And he was respecting me like the CFO. Con, what do you want to do about the monthly schedule? What do you want to do about the numbers? And so on and so forth. And in the middle of it, I actually realized um, I wasn't empowering this individual at all. In fact, I was giving him too much of a, of, a, of a safety blanket with me. And I completely separated myself. And I, I drew the line right then and there to say, you're the CFO, I'm the CEO, I'm gonna focus on the business. You tell me about the economics, you tell me about what we're doing on this, 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 this. The attitude change in that CFO overnight was incredible. Took full control of the finance agenda, brought me in when and if it was necessary, but for the most part took the ownership of the decisions, knowing that I had the equal skill set to his to be able to, to see, say, through the decisions, challenge them and test them. And the hardest thing I had to do was not challenge it. If it's not done my perfect way, that's fine. Uh, allow the individual to find their own space. So I had to do that with the chief financial officer at the time. And it was a very key lesson because I carried that into my, to my work over here in China where now, if I take it one step further, I'm in a very foreign market. I know commerce, but the nuts and bolts of doing business in China, I don't know. And I truly have to empower and rely on my senior team. So my commercial director over here, it's his decisions, what's happening structurally in sales. It's his decision, what's happening with our resource allocation across the marketing portfolio. And I made him aware of that at the beginning, and I made it very clear. His responsibility, my job is to give him the tools and support him. And he's really taken ownership of that situation and comes to me, keep me posted, uh, and regularly reminds me that he's not letting me down and that you know, he hopes I'm proud of him.